I'm going to put it on mute right now. Okay. Hey, MC Hammer, can you go to the podium and start talking? Too, if you need. Nope. Okay. Then just talk. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We are up here in Augusta. Yeah. Hold on. Thing? I'm not done with you. Nope. All right. I am. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I'm <laughs> doing what I'm told. <laughs> nope. uh, talk regular. Keep talking normal. One, two, three, four, five. You're your normal voice. That is my normal voice today. All right. That's good. I can hear you. Thank you. Good. Thanks.
mistake. Got it all set. Um, I thank everybody for coming. Um, my name is uh, Patrick Kelleher. I'm the commissioner of the Maine Department of Marine Resources, and with me is Major Beal from the Maine Marine Patrol. Uh, today I have the sad duty of confirming that Julie uh, DiPietro uh, Hollowack, 63, of New York City, died yesterday as a result of a shark attack while swimming near Bailey's Island. I first want to express my condolences to Julie's friends and family, and specifically to thank the individuals who responded and helped bring the situation to a quick closure by helping bring her to, a sh to shore where unfortunately she was pronounced deceased by the local EMS. I have consulted with Gregory Skomel, who is a senior shark, a senior scientist with the Mass Department of Marine Fisheries. We were able to recover a fragment of a tooth, and with that fragment, uh, Mr. Skomel was able to positively identify this as a great white shark. I want to stress that this is a very highly unusual event. In fact, this is the only confirmed fatality in Maine waters from a shark attack. The only other confirmed shark attack in Maine waters occurred 10 years ago near Eastport, and that shark was determined at the time to be a poor beagle shark. Yesterday's attack occurred at 3.26 p.m. in the afternoon as Julie and a family member were swimming approximately 20 yards from shore on Bailey's Island. As I mentioned, this is a highly unusual event. However, at this time, the department is, going to ur is urging swimmers and other people recreating in and around the waters of the Casco Bay region, and in particular near Bailey's Island, to be aware of their surroundings and to avoid schools of fish, which will attract seals. The seals, in return, will attract sharks. Areas that are congregation points for seals, such as a seal haul-out area, are particularly to be avoided. The Maine Marine Patrol will be conducting a follow-up investigation in the coming days. Major Beale will now provide more information on the incident and follow-up investigation. And after that, we'll be happy to answer any questions that we may have. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, my name is Major Beale. Uh, with the Marine Patrol, as the Commissioner mentioned. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, echo his heartfelt condolences to the friends and family of Julie Dimpero Hollowack. As Commissioner Kelleher stated, yesterday afternoon, Marine Patrol was notified of, of an individual swimming near Bailey Island that was suspected to have been involved with what appeared to be a shark attack. Following an external assessment conducted by the Medical Examiner's Office, as Commissioner Kelleher noted, it has been confirmed that this was in fact a shark attack and the shark was in fact a great white. Marine Patrol along with the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office in conjunction with the Oars and Bailey Island Fire Department responded to the scene, but the victim had already been pronounced deceased when rescue crew arrived on scene. Marine Patrol is continuing to uh, monitor the area immediately around Bailey Island where the incident took place uh, for sharks and ask that the public please report sightings to your local Marine Patrol officer. Uh, this morning we have field staff both at, uh, on the water in the immediate area and also we've conducted a flight uh, stretching between Casco Bay and Sheepskit Bay uh, where we did not observe any sh sharks present in the area. As the commissioner mentioned, I want to emphasize that we urge swimmers and others recreating in the water, including those using paddlecraft, to avoid areas where they witness schools of fish and seals. Since sharks, including great whites, do venture into Maine's coastal waters, we urge people to avoid swimming or paddling near seals and schooling fish, which are prey for sharks. Uh, moving forward, our intention is to issue a press release later in the day with summary information regarding this incident. Thank you. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Have you seen uh, some evidence online of dive companies recently in the area uh, 
to come in to extract uh, fish. Are you guys looking into that at all? Uh, we've not received any information about that. I mean, we've see, certainly been aware of that type of activity farther offshore, but not in not on the inshore waters. Um, but if that information comes in, we certainly would uh, would be looking into that. So, um, I, I want to stress that it's um, that, that it's the presence of uh, this is a predator prey relationship issue. So this is it's the presence presence of seals that are really the driver here. So. Yep. Was there any thought of maybe closing the surrounding beaches here for at least 24 hours to get a better handle of what, what's actually going on? So um, w because of the rarity of this issue um, and the fact that we have consulted very closely with our counterparts at Mass Department of Marine Fisheries, we feel like the, the prudent thing to do at this time is to just continue to express um, caution within the area and, and while recreating, swimming and recreating. Um, it, it's, it's the, again, it's the rarity of the event that um, made us believe that we didn't need to take action such as a closure. That being said, um, I have been in close contact with Commissioner Beal at the Department of Conservation. Um, the, as you all know, the Department of Conservation um, is in charge of the state parks. Right around the corner you have Popham Beach and Reed State Park Beach. Um, our plane flew that area today. That is an area where because of the bottom coloration we would be able to observe any sharks in that area. None were observed. They are known areas to have sharks, but I, it's my understanding that um, that the um, uh, park manager has put a, um, a basically a waiting situation into place for now um, while we continue to investigate and talk with the experts on this matter. The other swimmer, are you able to tell us, was that her daughter or granddaughter and was she physically injured? Um, I, I can confirm that it was her daughter um, and she was not injured. Um, she was able to um, swim back by and, and, and get out of the water very shortly after. Um, but, it, you know, the quick reaction of both her daughter uh, and some eyewitnesses who were able to um, call 911 quickly uh, to get uh, both Marine Patrol and local EMS uh, into the area quickly. Can you say how far from shore she was swimming at the time? Uh, approximately 20 yards. Yeah, I, so we, we are aware that there have been a few reports of seals within the area that have had bite marks. Um, th this is something that is a common, you know, fairly common occurrence throughout the, um, throughout the year. It's important to note that there are records dating back into the late 1800s around the presence of great white sharks in the Gulf of Maine. Um, so um, uh, reports of great whites and activity are, with great whites is, is not something new. Um, obviously, this type of issue is certainly new to, to Maine. Uh, you have to look down to Massachusetts, um, and, and um, I should let you folks know that Greg Skomel is definitely available um, to answer any questions about the behavior and the characteristics of great whites. He is certainly the, uh, the subject matter expert on the East Coast. Can you talk about, oh, Could you talk about the heroic efforts of the kayakers that went out to actually rescue these? Yeah, I, we, I'm, we are, to protect both the family and the kayakers' uh, identification, we're not going to release their names, but I, I can't stress enough the, the thanks um, <clears throat> that we have uh, for the efforts that they, they made. Uh, you know, in the face of that type of situation, the fact that they were able to, to kayak into that area um, and help uh, bring the body back to shore was, um, was nothing more than uh, miraculous, and we certainly thank them. Uh, uh, sincerely thank them. Are you able to say where the uh, swimmer's wearing a wetsuit? Uh, the, the, uh, the victim was wearing a wetsuit. Do you know if the uh, shark was still in the area when the kayakers got there? Did they witness the shark at all? We don't know. Yeah, we, we're, we're not aware of any additional sightings after, uh, after the initial contact. Commissioner, that wetsuit would be an attraction for a shark, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, I, I don't want to. I'm certainly not the subject matter expert, but uh, in having conversations with uh, uh, w with the doctor down in Massachusetts, you know, those type that uh, any wearing anything dark could mimic um, uh, a seal. 
it's certainly you know that again though it, it's it's not something we ever would have considered in Maine waters um, as far as wearing that type of a wetsuit. Given the, given the fact that it's summer and, and even though we're in this pandemic, there are still visitors coming to the state of Maine. Are you uh, hoping to maybe see more patrols in populated areas like Reef State Park or something where you know there's going to be a large gathering of people just to yeah, kind of put, the to put some people at ease? Yeah, that's absolutely our intention, as I, as I referenced earlier, to increase our, our focus uh, in just the outreach to the public in a higher profile along the coast, as opposed to when we're often working fisheries-related issues and doing so in a more uh, covert manner. Um, it's certainly, a, you know, important just to take that, that, that it, you know, again, it is tragic, uh, but also, uh, you know, an isolated incident that, you know, we're kind of, you know, working our way through the, the state's never seen. With, with this occurrence happening, being the first fatality, are all the harbor mats, I mean, is there like a general notice that goes out to harbor mats so they can ping everybody and say, listen, if you see anything, you need to report back immediately? Yeah, we do that. Uh, we, we communicate through the Department of Marine Resources and through other outlets, uh, and you know, communicate regularly with our harbor masters and our field staff has a healthy relationship with harbor masters, the local uh, commercial fishing community, and others just along the, the waterfront. So it's, uh, it's an effective uh, method of communication. Yeah, um, they, they definitely own property right in that area. Um, so I understand that uh, they spent uh, four to five months every summer here. Um, they were well, the, the individuals were well known in the community, very active within the community while they were here during the summer months. Um, uh, beyond that, I, I really don't know if you have anything to add to that, Major. Yeah, I think I'll just add briefly that, you know, I'm, I'm close with the Harpswell community. It's a really, it's a tight knit, uh, coastal community, kind of uh, iconic to, to, to Maine's waterfront, and uh, that in fact Julie and her, her husband uh, are just well-known, very respected individuals, and the community is really at a just a, a tough juncture in trying to process yesterday's event. Yeah, the, the last thing I want to stress is um, to an earlier question. Um, one of the first things that uh, the department did yesterday was put an, an announcement out through our gov delivery system to our commercial fishermen within the area. Um, and um, today we're expanding that uh, notice to all members of the public, uh, commercial industry, uh, as well as members of the public. If you see, if you see any sort of activity, it's very important to call the Maine Marine Patrol. Uh, we can provide those contact information for you. Um, I think any, any type of information that we get um, around that activity will help us and we are going to pass that information along to the researchers who are following these sharks. Um, we do know that there are some 200 sharks that have been tagged over the years, um, mostly off Massachusetts, but they all have satellite tags. Um, so uh, Dr. Skolnell is going back and, and reviewing that data to see if there is any, uh, any um, indication that some of those sharks may have moved north. Uh, in the recent days, but um, you know, again, the rarity of this event, the fact that it's happened, does not mean it's going to happen again. And we just continue to urge everybody um, remain vigilant um, when they're in those um, uh, any areas of high probability. Great. Great. And I'll all set. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. I appreciate. Thanks, everyone. It. Appreciate it. Jeff Nichols, the communications director, is here. If anybody needs additional information, I know Jeff will be putting out another statement um, finalizing all this later in the day. So, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, someone wishing to support the family right now to perhaps send anything. Do you, do you know where they'd be able to? Yeah, we've, we've not, we've not, the majors had conversations with the family today, and the sergeant who is in charge of the investigation has as well. We've not been given any information there as far as um, additional support. Right now, they're just stressing that they they just want to be able to try to comprehend what's happening. Yeah. 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 I appreciate that question, though. That's, yeah. that's, that's 
is very nice. I, I did have a conversation with family earlier in the day, and it was simply, can we just try to, you know, grieve together on our, you know, down here and, and try to work through just what comes with such a tragic loss. It's, mm. I can't, I cannot imagine. And yeah. it's, it's certainly. I was in the neighborhood yesterday, and I spoke with some neighbors who had the flag at half staff, and it just seems like everyone was having, you know, how do you wrap your mind around that? Just mm. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys for your time. Yeah, Great. absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. you had up just before your, your press conference started, this plane was by two inches. That was him. That was, that was, that was, that was him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he was just coming because we got a weather window that's closing, right. so he came back up. Okay. We yeah. could have timed that better, don't we? No, no actually, I, I mean, think we should have timed it better. He could have done a flyby. I, and we yeah, yeah. I saw it. There it was. I shot it. You guys walked out. It. <laughs>